Welcome back, guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Something that I often hear about JS8 is that your time has to be accurate in order for the messages to be decoded on your end and for others to be able to decode your messages as well. It's a bit of a misconception. Actually, the timing is what's critical. And I want to take a minute today to show you how to set your timing even if you're completely off-grid and you have nothing more than a wristwatch on your hand. Now for this video today, I'm using my mobile station and my shack station so that I can uh, get some messages to be transmitted uh, exactly when I need them. So the first thing I'm going to do, well, let's look at this. If you notice right here, this is the time on my Raspberry Pi and it says 9.45 a.m. The time up here is actually 9.49 a.m. The one up here is set uh, over the internet, and this one is typically set by the GPS or over the internet. I've unplugged both for testing this morning, so you can see that I'm more than three minutes off in time. So let's see what happens when we hear a signal in JS8. All right, so here comes the signal on the waterfall. You may be able to hear it in the background, I'm not sure. If you notice though, the signal started before this timing mark here. And if you watch, we will not decode a single thing in JS8 call. That's because our timing is too far off. Fortunate for us, Jordan has built in some really cool tools in JS8 that allows us to correct this problem without even bothering to set the time. Under your view menu, you want to come down to Show Time Drift Controls. And that's going to populate this new box right down here at the bottom. One other thing we'll want to do is we'll say View, and in the Band Activity column, we want to show our time delta. And you'll notice now we have a new column here called Time Delta. All right, so the next signal you hear you can either sync your time with the beginning of the signal or sync your time with the end of the signal. Typically, I prefer the end of the signal as it's a little easier to predict. But let's wait for the next signal and see if we can't sync our time up. All right, so here comes the signal down the waterfall. I'm just going to hover over Sync Time Drift. And when that signal quits, I'm going to click Sync Time Drift to Now. All right, and if you notice right up here at the top, it says plus 5,000 milliseconds or five seconds. Let's see how close I got with the next transmission. All right, so here comes our new signal down the waterfall, and look how the beginning of the signal matches up with our timing mark here on the waterfall. Let's see if this one will decode. All right, and there you can see the decoded message uh, right here, and you can see the time delta here. So I'm off by 600 milliseconds, or roughly half a second. That's close enough for JS8 to be able to decode all of your messages. So let's go ahead now and send a directed message to my mobile station, and let's make sure that I'm close enough that he's decoding me as well. As you can see, he decoded our message just fine, and the automated reply is coming back now. And we've decoded the reply perfectly well. So that's all there is to it. Uh, you can use the built-in time drift controls and don't even need to be connected to the internet or GPS. Uh, just You can watch the waterfall and set your time drift so that you'll be able to decode the next time you're out in the field. All right, guys, I hope this video helped you out. Be sure to click the subscribe button down below. Leave any questions in the comments. Until next time, 7-3.